quiet. You can forget about pedals with this machine. It's the knee action that keeps you moving along. These could be just the thing to steer clear of traffic jams, and so much more social than automobiles. Here, a pedestrian takes a back seat. Well, seat or something. No more pedal pushing. It's all downhill from here. This strange looking vehicle may not be the height of elegance for the freeway, but for the beach, it's the Rolls Royce of cars. The Rolagon, as it's called, weighs 3,800 pounds, but rides easily over rocks. Huge tires do the trick. Inflated with only two pounds pressure, the huge nylon and rubber jobs envelop a man without hurting him. Spreading the weight over such an area, it feels like a massage. Where a Jeep gets stuck, Rolagon makes it in a breeze. And the whole gang can sunbathe up top on the way to the beach. Both the Army and Navy are interested in the buggy. A rolling son of a gun is a Rolagon. Strange place for a luggage rack, or is it a cow catcher? Well, it's neither. It's the careless pedestrian who benefits from this new invention. And just to prove it really works, a volunteer meets an auto for a head-on collision. Well, looks like he's still in one piece, but it's, hey, Buster, once is enough. A man with a plan for power-propelled pedestrians is Louis Richards, 29-year-old graduate student at the Illinois Institute of Technology. His portable power scooter takes all the legwork out of traveling to and from the campus. Built around a fractional horsepower model airplane motor, it burns gas in ounces. Consumption adds up to about 120 miles per gallon. Inventor Richards plans to put the 12-pound scooter into mass production, which will bring the price down to about $50. A fascinating prospect for the foot sole. you're looking at a toy? Uh-uh. It's a test model of the car of tomorrow, a car that drives itself. At a research center in Princeton, New Jersey, a switch is turned and the amazing model shows its stuff. Following a strip of wire on the floor, the car continues along its miniature highway until electric impulses generated by the other car ahead cause it to swerve to the right. No chance for human error. It's all done electronically. When a collision impends, same impulses, only this time the brakes are applied. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? We'll be able to sit back and read the paper while the car drives us to work. Everything small scale, dashboard and baggage can be... Oh, pardon me, that's the engine back there. Likewise small scale, but providing good speeds at low gas consumption. 45 to the gallon. Light on the purse, too. And very light for those who have trouble parking a normal sized jalopy. Here's real curb service. San Diego builders of this mighty midget call it the town shopper. There's plenty of room for packages, hence the name. It's almost as easy to open as Milady's purse, and so much easier to find what's inside. Two can shop as easily as one, and three if you don't mind being squeezed. The town shopper saves gas, time, and waste motion. A prize package indeed. Step in and let's go boating. What we have here may appear to be conventional automobiles, but the German inventor has built-in standard equipment that allows the cars to take to the river and lake like a duck takes to you-know-what. Many prototypes of amphibious cars have been built through the years, but this is the first one to go into actual production. Already, said the manufacturers, thousands of the craft have been ordered. But so far, only seven a day can be produced until new facilities are ready. The car, or the boat, is economical, too. 32 miles to a gallon on land, a gallon and a half an hour on water. Where do you get your license? From the Motor Vehicle Bureau or the Coast Guard? The price of gasoline may be going up, 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 but here's an inventor who's got plenty of wind in his sails. It's a Thomas Electric Windmobile. This buggy is a breeze to drive just the same as a car. Oh, except for cranking up the fan, of course. It's still got a few problems, kind of hard to see where you're going. But who knows, it could take off. Shades of Jules Verne. It looks like a traveling gas mask, but it's only the height of streamlining, or something. George Wichiff, the inventor, was tired of getting a soaking on his way to work each day in rainy England. So, he came up with this rainproof bike. 
Once inside the canvas-covered contraption, it's plain sailing. It may look strange, but who cares? Obviously not George. In fact, he's pleased as punch. The British, it seems, have their parking troubles too. At any rate, an Englishman has figured out this ingenious method for getting that car out of the way. It's all very simple. You do the whole thing by pressing buttons. So far, it's only gotten to the model stage, but it's a nice idea. In the U.S., whose problem is a little more pressing, the same general idea is in actual operation. The car elevator can really handle cars, but quickly, as you'll see right now. No traffic congestion here, and it's a whole lot better than getting a ticket. For a guy who likes gadgets, here's the ultimate. A station wagon with everything you could want for camping or life on the road, including lifeboat, all built in and automatic. Behind the tailgate, a complete kitchen. While dad is out boating, mom gets the meal ready in case he doesn't bring back any fish. She's got a refrigerator. And of course, a stove. Naturally, the kitchen sink. This buggy really has everything, including a canopy to shelter the cook from the sun or rain. All controlled by push buttons, including the canopied family size and fully automatic tent on the roof. Alas, if those push buttons have you starry-eyed, this is one model not for sale. It's a dream car, strictly experimental, and the cost of production is even more impressive than all the fancy features. So dream away and wait the day. There's more than one way to run a railroad, and in Britain they've come up with an idea that might be on the right track. A flat car has been modified so that the car wheels drive rollers that in turn power a chain drive to the railroad wheels. As simple as that. Then, all you need is a full tank of gas and a clear track. In England, many small branch lines are being abandoned at the drop of a caboose. This may be the means of reviving some of them. After giving this some thought, we were just wondering, suppose you get a flat, who would you call? The garage or the roundhouse? If this idea becomes widespread, how would they work out a timetable? Or maybe on weekends, they just need a calendar. Department of Inventions, somebody ought to invent. Something to stop people like our pixelated pal here from attempting to navigate the highways while three sheets to the wind. Question, can mechanization keep intoxicated idiots from killing themselves and innocent people to boot? Well, here's one German dream invention. An alcohol o mat that would be built into any car. One whiff of Hans high octane breath, and it goes into action. Ach, du lieber, maybe I should walk already instead. It's better for the health, no? Jawohl. Now, here's something new. George Mershon makes furnace grates for a living, but if this takes off, he'll be making millions instead. It's a coal-powered automobile. Fill her up. She'll do 75 miles per hour and has no gears to shift. This baby really cooks. Thought you could get away with it, huh? Well, here's a gadget that may give the police the edge and you a ticket. It's a new invention being demonstrated by J.W. Thompson in Portland, Oregon. Off they go. The police car only has to catch up with the speeding vehicle and latch on to his bumper with a specially designed hook. Then he just stops and waits for the hook to do its trick. The long arm of the law is even longer now. In spring, a young man's fancy turns to love in various forms, and his hot rod is one object of his affections. How better to bedeck his love than with electrically lit tires? We're not kidding. Some aesthetic Germans have come up with this idea to lend a little color to the drabest feature of an automobile. Keep your white walls. 
Give me something in orchid and pink. I think 75 watts would do. Anyway, getting hit by this car is bound to be a shocking experience. The French, they're just crazy about gadgets. Try this for size. It's an expandable house. This tricky little two-seater passing its tests with flying colors in the sky over Danbury, Connecticut is called the Air Fibian. It's an airborne automobile, a new approach to the old problems of traffic hazards and getting somewhere in a hurry. The propeller comes off in a jiffy. Just a few turns is all it takes for the inventor of the novel craft. The Air Fibian was designed and built by a company headed by Robert Fulton, an air age descendant of the steamboat inventor. There are two locks to disconnect and the wing assembly is detached. It's easy to operate, easy to fly, and on the road it does an easy 45 miles per hour. It may not be long before the Air Fibian is a common sight around local airports. Airplane is now at home on the highway. This is a convertible, but not the kind you think. Leland Bryan has fashioned himself a car. At least it's a car when it's on the ground, and it goes spinning along the highway with a pusher airplane propeller doing the pushing at speeds up to 50 miles an hour. But when he gets to an airport, it's a different story. That car you saw scooting along the road begins to sprout wings with the aid of Brian's brother. The wings, which have been folded along the sides, are attached, and the convertible is ready for the wild blue yonder. With a 40 horsepower motor, it takes to the air. Not bad for $300. No bumper to bumper traffic for him. Presenting the height and modern design in new cars, this streamlined model built in Los Angeles needs only three wheels, thereby saving you one quarter of your tire bill and offering many other economies. Fill up the tank and get 40 miles to the gallon. Tires are $5 each and detachable fenders only $4. With an overall length of 14 feet, this novel motor car turns in a 13-foot circle. Plexiglass windshields and airplane-like steel tubing are other features. Her 58-horsepower four-cylinder motor provides a cruising speed of 65 miles an hour and a top speed of 100. Pretty snazzy for weaving through that heavy post-war traffic. <laughs> 